Zealand Nationals FAQ uh, with Radio Research with myself, Ian, and of course, as always, my co-host, Alan. How are you, Alan? I'm I'm good. So yeah. So for those out there, this isn't the uh, this isn't the start of season season three of our challenge. Um, we thought uh, New Zealand Nationals is really close, and obviously a lot of information is going up now. And uh, I suppose we just wanted to get as much information out there. I mean, uh, as OP manager, um, I've put up posts and stuff like that, and copied stuff somewhere. And you always hope people read it, uh, but you know you'll always get questions from people. So. Um, we fought tonight, um, and we'll go over nationals, and we've got a little bit of good housekeeping to do, and also I suppose uh, me and Ian at some point will just reminisce about national nationals experience um, while we we uh, while we actually give you the, the sure. actual information. All right. So um, yeah, so let's, let's kick off. Before we the Q and A, uh, what do you have for good housekeeping tonight? Well, um, a couple of things to discuss. First of all. Um, when we come back for season three, uh, we're going to be doing a new feature on the show, um, and that's go- it's going to be in line with our, our focus on community. So we're going to be doing a best of the web um, section, so we're going to be kind of summarizing some of the stuff you should find. Obviously, when we started uh, with Fab, you know, over a, you know, a year ago now, uh, there was no content creators because we hadn't come out, but now there's a, a plethora of content creators, and we uh, want to steer our viewers to the right direction. Uh, yeah. I was going to give a few shout-outs tonight, but I'll just give one shout-out tonight, as I promised. Um, shout-out to um, Outcast Haven. Uh, uh, Outcast, Outcast um, Haven. They're a, great bunch, they're a great bunch of guys in the States that are not only doing podcasts, they're doing uh, law stuff now as well. They've got a law video up, um, and also they're doing a lot of TTS uh, streaming as well. Caught their stream this afternoon. Um, so we'll, we'll put up um, a link to them, and doing, we'll, we'll discuss it further. Yeah, and they're doing some live videos as well. Um, and uh, they've been really good. Like, um, they've been really yeah, good at listening to uh, the community and stuff. I, like, I know they put out a uh, uh, KO versus Kano uh, Blitz challenge, uh, and they got hmm. called out for a few mistakes they made, like uh, Reinar specializations in, that, in the KO deck and stuff like that. Um, but uh, then they uh, since that they listened to that and they they re rewound it back and put out a a, video, a, a second video with a rematch uh, with uh, the deck fixed up and stuff like that. So it's great to see uh, that they uh, took that um, what the community uh, said on board and and kept going. So yeah, um, great, great. I've been I've been enjoying watching them. I watched some of their live streams from TTS today. I also saw. Uh, I believe it was them that did an ultimate pit fight um, uh, video um, a couple of days ago, and that was that was always mm-hmm. nice. You know how much I love uh, I love uh, the ultimate pit fight, so it's great to see uh, it's great to see that getting some love on on the stream as well. Yeah, and and to be fair, talking about their mistakes, it's not like I haven't been pinged. Yeah, right. For making a mistake on stream, I think. Uh, <laughs> A razor reflexed a uh, pursuit of knowledge. Uh, I think for for a win, in a um, TTS episode, which was on stream, so highly embarrassing, highly embarrassing. But um, yeah, no, that's we're cool. All, all right, we're um, all so, yeah, still we'll, we'll definitely. That, 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 yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, true. But, yeah, we'll we'll definitely um, be ramping it up and talking about those guys because uh, like you know easily I could talk for another ten minutes about some of the other. Um, casts and videos that are going up, but um, yeah, we'll we'll leave that till season three, and uh, we'll we'll bring you the best of the web. Yeah. Uh, now the next one is um, just update on where we're going at the moment. Ian has his new sound system uh, for casting, so you might hear that his his audio is amazing. <laughs> I am now on a brand new Acer Aspire instead of my work laptop. Laptop that only has four gigs of RAM. I've got. Uh, beefy 16 gig RAM, and um, you might have noticed that we did some graphics to announce our FAQ, FAQ yeah. episode. Um, so that's one of the things I'll be working on, and um, still waiting to get the website up and running. But yeah, me and Ian are, are doubling down. Yeah. Uh, we've got some ideas, um, mainly for the, yeah, to try some, and coincide with season three. Some, some may, may even say we're going all in. Yes, we, yeah. <laughs> all in, all out. Uh, who knows which direction? Um, but yeah, so just yeah, if you're interested, yeah, we'll we'll try and uh, yeah, we're we're just working on stuff. Uh, it's a little bit slow at the moment, but um, we, we've got some new tools, we've got new toys, which is uh, the coolest thing. 
Um, and yeah, computer, I could actually yeah, probably play TTV as well um, if I wanted to. Yeah. Uh, so the final thing is, of course, um, Card Merchant Road to Nationals. Yeah, and I think this leads in nicely to, uh, to Nationals. So uh, Card Merchant uh, has got the last Road to Nationals event. Now they're doing it a bit differently because of the whole COVID restrictions. Um, they have uh, decided to break it up into uh, uh, all, almost, well, not almost, it is a, a, a qualifying tournament to qualify to make the top eight. So uh, I know you're going to be judging that, so if you want to give us a quick rundown of, uh, of how they're doing that. Okay, um, well, very simply, I am going to refer you guys through to the um, Card Merchant uh, Facebook page. Um, otherwise, you can find the link if you go to uh, fabtcg.com and look at the Nationals FAQ uh, page. It does actually uh, an FAQ page. It does have a link um, to their events. Um, we'll but how they're page. doing it? Yeah, we'll put we'll put the link up on our page. But um, uh, how they're doing it is because there is a restriction on the number of groups that you can have in the store at the moment. They are doing small groups. So basically, you can uh, yeah uh, you can um, qualify in like a, basically a heat. So I believe they're running eight 10-man um, heats. Uh, so basically the winner goes through to the top eight. And then I believe those are running Saturday uh, mainly. Um, but again, check, check the full details uh, with Card Merchant um, and or contact Matt Rogers. Uh, you can grab a hold of him. I'm sure he'd be happy to answer your questions. Um, but yeah, the winner of each heat goes into the top eight. Um, and then the top eight is happening on a Sunday. So it's a little bit different. Um, obviously, and, people and, can queue up again. Yeah, and, and the big thing is it's split over two weekends. So first weekend is this weekend, and then uh, the last chance qualifier and the top eight is the following weekend. Yeah, so it's definitely uh, definitely a bit of a different um, definitely a bit of a different event. Um, yeah, um, and it's just basically born on the back of COVID. I know the next COVID announcement for New Zealand is coming up, which is on Friday, I believe, uh, the 14th, uh, is, or is that Monday? Is the next announcement. So, um, yeah, that's sorry, it's actually Monday. Okay, yeah. So the team at Card Merchant is basically just uh, trying to stitch this together. Uh, like, for example, unfortunately, the Mighty Ape one, uh, Rotary Nationals had to be cancelled. Uh, uh, just because of their, you know, their kind of restrictions. But um, yeah, bravo on Matt for trying to trying to get this through. Yep. Um, and yeah, and hopefully we'll have a few more people qualified. Um, and yeah. so talking not about, Matt. Uh, talking about uh, talking about the qualification too is that um, we'll get into it uh, uh, when we get into the FAQ. But uh, of course, uh, the 90 day XT qualification has now been set. So. Uh, so uh, the XT for this tournament isn't going to affect your qualification for nationals. Only only making the top eight will give you an invite if you don't if you're not already qualified. Yeah, that's that's totally totally correct. So yeah, so obviously you will get points through the events, but yeah, it won't it won't count for qualification. That will set up on Monday morning at nine a.m. But um, I suppose uh, yeah, again, um, all questions yeah, throw them through to uh, Card Merchant and to help you out there um but yeah i will be at the event uh judging um helping judge the event along with matt rogers um all right so let's let's go into the meat of uh this discussion all righty so yeah let's well let's let's uh let's remind everyone the date is uh technically uh nz nationals is running over three days because uh on the friday night the it's the 20 uh Friday the 25th to Sunday the 27th of September. Uh, of course, uh, let's go down. Let's go down the line. Friday night, we are opening up with a battle hardened event. So, uh, for those yep. people who don't know what a battle hardened event is, may not have been to one before. Do you want to give them a quick rundown of a uh, what the format so is going to be because the format is is different for nationals and b what mm -hmm. what they can. Yeah, so Battle Hardened is generally the event that we like to kind of offer before any big events. So if you've been to one of the callings, um, there would have been a Battle Hardened before uh, those events. So um, Battle Hardened uh, is going to be at the Nationals venue, first of all. So it's at the Wellington Bridge Club, which is 17 Tinakora Road, formed in Wellington. Um, the event is being run by us and our uh, side events partner, Calico Key. 
uh, Kauka Kit from Vipeda is our official kind of like a science uh, partner um, for the event. He's going to be there um, as the retailer at the event. So um, the Battle Hardened, yeah, kicks off at, uh, let me just make sure I've got the right kickoff time here actually. Um, doors open at 5.30 and the event kicks off at 6.30. Um, the format is blitz, so it's going to be a five-round blitz event. Um, so we're looking to kind of finish it by, by nine o'clock. Um, there will be a uh, law book up for grabs as well. And the other thing is, of course, is, as well as just normal kind of like, you know, booster prizes, uh, there will be um, the dev team. The dev team will be on hand. Um, they will be slinging the event as well. And there will be some prizes if you beat them as well. So um, we expect to have uh, James, Chris, uh, and Jason uh, at the event. So that's going to be one of the rare chances. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, there's just not very many chances to play these guys because James, Jason, and Chris don't tend to play um, because, you know, they are dev teams, so they don't, they don't get a chance to play many events. So Battle Hardened is pretty much um, the event that they do always play. So, um, yeah, so it's going to be really exciting. Um, and... The other thing, of course, is, you know, Blitz, uh, while it's a fun format, it will be important later on in the weekend. So um, getting some uh, practice in at Battle Hard might be a good idea uh, for Blitz, but we'll, we'll get to the reason uh, soon why that's important. Yeah. All righty. So that leads us, so that is Friday night. That leads us on to the main event on Saturday. Now, Saturday is day one of Nationals. To play yep. in to play in it, you can't just rock up. You have to, uh, you have to be qualified. So, um, where can people check out if if they are qualified? Okay, again, if you head to fabtcg.com, uh, you'll see an article up um, which says uh, it's for New Zealand and Taiwan nationals qualification because the cutoff uh, for both uh, nationals was the same date. Um, otherwise, if you go to organised play and look up New Zealand Nationals, uh, we'll look up uh, basically national champs. You'll see that there's a page there that's located. Um, otherwise, I put links. Uh, there is a link up there in the uh, FAB fan page as well to the article. Um, basically, what uh, the qualification page covers is it covers those players that have qualified through back in top eight at Road to Nationals, and also the players that have qualified on the 90-day XP. Um, so all that is a just need to scan, look for your player ID. Um, it's all there on the list. Um, as long as your name is on that list, you may turn up to nationals. Yeah. Now, also because of course um, we are living in COVID times, uh, LSS has um, taken some extra precautions. Uh, there is going to be a hard 100 person cap at the venue uh, for this event. So. Uh, even if you are qualified, what uh, uh, we want you to pre-register to let us know if you if you are actually going to come in and and use your qualification and actually play. So how do how do people go uh, about um, registering that they are going to be at the event on Saturday? Okay. Well, again, um, all this information is is on um, the fabtcg.com website, and um, Ian can uh, will chuck in links. Um, in the in this uh, in this cast uh, for you guys to check, um, but really simply, um, if you're qualified, um, you can actually use the. It's, this is part of the function of the Play Anywhere service that we um, released, um, you know, a few months ago. Um, what happens is there is an event code. It is a link um, and a two, basically a two-word code. You can use that to actually pre-register. So you go into your, um, uh, you basically go into your Gem Player account login and you can go find event, or you can just use the code. The actual uh, event name, uh, well, the actual code is flying-elephant, uh, which seems uh, kind of strange, or, you know, you can just use that link, and what it'll do is it will register you to the event. Um, obviously, if you're not qualified for nationals and you try and do this, I will just uh, untick your name on my end, and you won't be in the event. Um, but this will be really helpful for us, uh, knowing how many players are coming. Um, obviously, we need to have a kind of, you know, controlled environment. Um, again, if you read the FAQ up on the website, um, it kind of outlines the kind of things that we're doing for safety. Um, with COVID, we want people to register. Um, 
I suppose I'll go into this now, Ian, if you, yeah. if you don't mind. I, feel, we'll I think this is the, the time to do it. Yeah, so uh, definitely, as I said, pre-register. That really helps us. So join join the event. Um, we're going to need players to use like the Code New Zealand COVID Tracer app so to cover, so there'll be the posters up for that. Um, again, the, the most obvious thing is if you are sick or if you come in showing flu-like symptoms, you will be asked to leave. You will not be admitted to the event. That's just like a hard, you know, I'm sorry, you need to be well. If you look like you're going to be sick, we, we will have to not admit you to the event. You know, uh, it's just one of those things. Uh, we've also invested in like face masks and hand sanitizer. All that's going to be available for attendees. You know, we uh, we spent like hundred. <laughs> we spent over two hundred dollars on hand sanitizer the other day um, for the event. Uh, another thing that we'll be doing again is using the Play Anywhere technology. Um, so what will happen is um, pairings will actually be pushed out to your GM player IDs. Um, so we're going to eliminate having to crowd around. Um, you know, because if you know most tournaments what like a pairings board is like yeah. you know people crowded around so you'll be able to check your pairings on play well if you if you if you're out there and you've used play anywhere before um to do remote events then you already know about this um, we will have pairings up on a projector as well um but you know using the play anywhere you're just going to be able to check through your phones um again we're gonna you know like there's a whole lot of safety things here like you know people need to use hand sanitizer each round yeah. Um, you know, we're encouraging everyone wears a face mask inside the venue. Um, handshakes are not encouraged. You know, just maybe a respectful nod to your opponent um, yeah, is good enough. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just, just really we want everyone to be uh, safe. Uh, and on that note, also um, be prepared to bring your um, bring your own like bring your own tokens and your own dice. So so you're not sh not you're not sharing dice with someone else and stuff like that. I mean, it sounds. It sounds silly and stuff like that, but any 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 uh, chance to cut down cross contamination it, 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 it will help. Um, will help. So so just be prepared and, uh, and and you know and th that way everyone can uh, hopefully uh, get through get through and uh, and uh, yeah have a good time and uh, and be safe while doing it. Yeah. So yeah, check out the FAQ. It's got the the full details. Yeah. One of the things like just Ian just mentioned is. You know, only touch your property, essentially. And, like, one of the things is, you know, we're recommending players don't congregate in the play area. Once your match is finished, you know, kind of get outside, that kind of stuff. You know, we'll, we'll call you in during rounds. But, yeah, it's just basically so we can try and, you know, keep the, keep the distance and keep safety um, with the event. Um, but, uh, yeah, the check, yeah, check the FAQ. And, you know, common sense goes a long way uh, in these times as well. So... Yeah, and we want this to be memorable because this this is our this is it this is the very first nationals event for a game that you know I, you know we've been working on for for like a year now so like, it's pretty. Well. So so with day one, uh, do we do, do we have an idea of how many how many roughly how many rounds uh, day one's going to be? Have you guys worked that out yet, or is that going to come down to? Uh, I do I do have, have it. Uh, I do have it written down. I actually, sorry, off the top of my head, I can't remember, but they're all basically, I believe it's uh, just off the top of my head, it's six rounds for day one. So the yeah. idea is that it has, there's a day one and then a cut to day two. So um, it'll be six rounds and it'll be basically uh, players, uh, it'll either be the, I think it's like the top 32 players or all players on like a certain points uh, number. Um, actually, I'll just see if I can find it because I, I have, Okay, all right, cool. So, sorry, I've got it here now. So, day one national chance will be seven rounds of Swiss, and what will happen is then all the players with either a 5-2 record or the top 16, which whichever is the greater amount. So, if there's 18 players on 5-2, um, you know, whatever the whatever the amount is, 5-2 or top 16 will advance to day two. Um, and then, obviously, day two will be three rounds of Swiss and then cut to the top eight which is, of course, a single elimination. So if you uh, play both days, um, you'll be playing, yeah, 10 rounds, of, 10 rounds of fab, and then depending on if you make top eight, uh, possibly another three rounds of fab after that. All right. That is, that, that is uh, that's pretty intense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it definitely is. 
Uh, but the other thing to, to remind players is, one, there are side events, which are being run by um, Calico Keep. Um, so there are events. There will be uh, drafts and pickup constructed events um, available. Uh, again, if you go check out the Calico Keep website, or again, all this uh, information is uh, abound in the FAQ and tournament structure stuff, uh, you can find that. But um, the big thing is, um, if you don't make the day two cut, there is an event for you on Sunday. Yeah. And uh, this comes back to why I was mentioning the importance of Blitz. So yeah. we are running our first PTI qualifier. Yeah. And for those who don't uh, know, what, what is a PTI? Yes, well, uh, what it, it is a professional tournament invite. Uh, now, initially, um, if you had uh, played any of the callings, you would have known that top eight um, of like our calling events, uh, you know, we're given an invite for Worlds. Uh, of course, you know, Worlds hasn't, you know, isn't going to happen this year due to COVID. Um, so what we decided to do for those players is that their um, calling top eights were converted to PTIs. And that's kind of our system uh, for giving away. So a PTI is basically uh, gives you an invite to any professional level, to a professional level event. Um, Nationals is one of those. So obviously, like people that didn't, you know, that already had callings, they could have cashed it in if they couldn't qualify any other way. But yeah, PTIs basically allowed you to attend professional level events. Um, you know, some events still may have some um, terms and conditions for using the PTIs, um, but yeah, basically this, this will allow you to get into high level events. So there's one PTI up for grabs um, uh, at the event for the first place, and uh, the format uh, for the PTI qualifier is Blitz. Yes, so um, if you've listened to the cast, we've talked about Blitz uh, quite a bit. Uh, we're, we're big proponents of it. Uh, if you need to uh, be reminded of of Blitz, it is 52 card deck. So that's uh, one one young hero, um, 11 pieces of equipment, um, including your weapon or weapons, uh, and then a 40 card uh, a 40 card deck that doesn't that doesn't change. So that's 52 mm. cards in a thing. And um, obviously with Crucible, a lot of you, new young heroes came out that are, um, you know, are legal for Blitz, so um, uh, it's, it, it is very important though with Blitz that, because um, I know a lot of theory crafting has been going around, um, and some people have been testing, but some people are sort of been mainly focusing on uh, constructed for nationals, and um, I've heard a number of people basically talk about uh, blitz decks that are illegal <laughs> like um, and so one of the the big components about blitz is please 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 with the 40 cards you put into your deck double check that you can legally play them uh, what I mean by this is um, I have had several conversations about KO where people have been talking <laughs> about how great um, doubling the cost of alpha rampage is so it turns from a 9 to an 18. Uh, the reason that is an illegal play is a while Alpha Rampage is indeed a brute action card, it is a Reiner um, specialization. So it cannot be played. Specialization. So it cannot be played in a, K, a KO deck. Um, so please check those specialization cards because I know I know a lot of times people uh, haven't haven't been thinking of them. They've just been like, oh yeah, cool. I'll I'll make Ira. I'm going to throw in the Lord of Wind, uh, the Lord of Wind combo. Mm. But you can't do that because that is a cut through, um, a cut through specialization. Yeah. So to, to be fair, um, but this is the first time where, like, for tournament play, it actually is that you've actually got more than one uh, hero in a class. I mean, this yeah. is the first time that you can say we've got two brute heroes. We now have three ninja heroes for that's god's right. sakes um, that's right it's crazy like um i've i've been theory crafting my benji list using fab db um, which i'll talk about in a, in a sec um but every time i keep on going hmm i should add willie miss boss in. and then yes. i'm like no yeah. and then i and then uh five minutes later i'm going man willie miss boss would be good in this deck and then i'm like oh, yeah sorry so, so it's, it's real easy so to it, do it is very important because course uh this is a pti there is a lot on the line there will be deck checks to the, to the top and you know you don't want to get called over um you know mid round one um and uh get uh pointed out because if you have put it into your deck 
gonna, this, and this is where it's going to, this is where it's super important because in Blitz you can't change your deck. So if you have, uh, if you have created an illegal deck, and it is an illegal deck um, for the whole, for the whole tournament. So effectively you're, you're cancelling your whole day because you can't, you, you're, you're not going to be able to change that card out. So please make sure before we get to round one and before you hand in your deck list that your deck is actually legal. If, that means if you're playing uh, the shapeshifter, please be please be sure to remember that you can only play um, specialization. You can't play just generic class cards. Um, you know, again, if you're playing the merchant, you can only play generic cards. Um, but yeah, just just be super careful when putting your blitz together, your deck together, that it is a legal deck because the last thing we want to do is disqualify something that because. Blitz is supposed to be fun and it can be a lot of fun, but the last, but what's going to be not fun is if you if you show up and get uh, DQ'd uh, in the first round for an illegal deck. Yeah, but I mean the, the same the same goes for um, you could say if it's one of your classic constructed deck and you're deciding to play a young hero because young heroes are legal classic constructed. The same move. Don't make your classic constructed KO deck with. Um, with Reinar specialization, so yeah. you, you can young, you can run young heroes in classic constructed. Um, I don't you know might, why you, you you'll would. be a braver man than I. <laughs> yeah, you'll be a braver man than I would. But I mean, it is possible. I mean, um, uh, I must admit, uh, I got a message from somebody before the Nelson event asking like if young heroes were legal because they had a clever plan that they wanted to play Ira, the Nelson event, so they could score the Ira confoil. I had. Unfortunately, tell them while they could play Ira at the event since it was legal at that time. Um, they the Ira Ira cold foil was not part of that prize pool, um, unfortunately. So they could not they could not get it. But there, some somebody was brave enough to think about it. Somebody was definitely brave enough to think about it. Um, so yeah, but um, uh, this this leads on very nicely to like a huge thing that I wanted to talk to people about, and hopefully hopefully we're not boring people with all this information, but. You know, we, we feel it's really important is is about deck lists. Ian was yeah. talking then, of course, about getting the deck lists, you know, legal. Um, but I also want to talk about you know getting the deck lists correct and also um, getting them legible as well. Um, so yeah, so what I suggest to, to players is uh, if you go look on the national festival, you can print out our official deck list. Um, uh, that would be great if you can write your, your deck list on that. That makes it much easier for the judges to read because obviously we could have upwards of like 70 or 80 deck lists that we want to go through. Um, you know, those are collected during the first round of the event. Um, so, yeah, just uh, and first I of all, and I would use our deck list. Yeah, and I would suggest handwriting your deck list for nationals because uh, I know there are a few, uh, there are a few systems like uh, – fabdb.net uh, that you can e export out a file uh, but uh, th those aren't 100% uh, um, 100% reliable um, I do know at one of the roads uh, there was a, a glitch that wasn't found until a depth check happened um, so uh, yeah, well I, I do I do have information on that that, that, that issue has been corrected uh, I've tried to correct uh, fabdb but you know, his lists are good but um, one of the things ultimately, yeah, well, you know, I want deck lists if they're handwritten or, I, I mean, I do recommend FabDB. I think they're really good and it's easy for judges to look at the lists. Um, one of the things is ultimately every player is responsible for their deck list. Yeah. So if you write up your deck list or if you get your, say you get your mate to write the deck list while you're sorting the deck, you know, it's not going to be his fault if he misses a card off your list it's going to be uh, your fault so however you do it if you use like a service like fabdb or anywhere you need to make sure it's correct you need to match up all those cards because like you know um for example you know karen on session blood was talking today about how he got a ip penalty in the top eight of the first road to nationals because um uh he he gave the example he he did the worst he did the worst thing he he basically wrote his deck list on a piece of yellow paper. It was like A5 size on both sides, and he left out three life for a life out of his deck, which scored him a IP2 penalty. And like you know, Karen's not Karen's a smart cookie, yeah. so it just proves that you know it can happen. Yeah. Uh, it can happen to anyone. Can make these kind of errors. So um, important is 
use a proper deck list, check it multiple times, make sure yeah, you're the again, one that's completing it. Again, we, you know, we know of stories that like, um, we we know of people who uh, were were waiting to borrow cards from someone, and they're like, oh, I'm not gonna write it down until I get until I get the card, so I know it's got it. And they got the card, and they forgot to add it add it to the deck list once they got it, and so they got IP warning for that. So yeah, absolutely double check, make sure everything is um, accounted for before you hand it in, because there's nothing more painful than starting starting behind the eight ball because you you haven't double checked uh, and you've made um, a, a basic mistake. Yeah, I mean uh, the best thing is like you know make your mistakes in the game. Don't make them before the game has already before the the event has started. That's just just putting you. That's that's a good way to tilt you for the rest of the day. Yeah, and um, also so, just, yeah, so, ju just yeah. the last thing about um, writing up your deck list as well. Uh, don't shorthand cards either. Um, don't, uh, for instance, I've seen people just write Tome um, when they're playing Tome Ascendal. But, but now that we're three sets in, there's multiple Tomes, even though there's only one generic Tome. Um, uh, but if you were playing in Wizard and you just picked Tome, uh, that's going to get you, that's not going to work because there's the possibility because there's already a wizard tome as well so so you, you need to make sure that you're not shorthanding um shorthanding just write write the correct name um i you know alan pulled me up at road road because i just wrote viz for my character name <laughs> for my character name um I, i'm especially i'm especially hard on you Ian. that's that's uh, that's the problem um, so, hard on so you. yeah like like again as, as we said just just make sure, like, we want you to have the best starting position for, for National. So, um, yeah. yeah. And and it is, if, if you guys, if you, it's the same level and for, rules and level enforcement as a calling, so it is a professional level event, so, yeah, you need to, you need to, you need to play, you need to play to the best of your abilities. Um, so, yeah, it's just, just really important. If, if you can try and minimize these errors, uh, you know, I mean, a lot of professionals will just talk about, you know, if you get all these things right before you go into the event, um, you're just going to be, you're just going to be in such a better position. Right. So, and I, I don't want to have to give, I don't want to give away penalties for just silly things like leaving three life for a life off your deck list, basically. Exactly. I do not want to do that. Alrighty. Yeah, we, we don't enjoy giving out IP penalties. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, other than that, is there is there anything else you want to cover before? Um, let me just think. Um, probably the, the main thing is um, people will be having, people will have questions, and I've done the FAQ and the structure information. Um, like, all the information is available on the FAB TCG website. Um, so, we'll, uh, you know, we've, we've done our best to put up all the information, but again, um, there might be a chance that I've missed something. And in fact, I probably, I probably actually realized. One other thing that I've forgotten to mention, it's not on the FAQ or need to update, is there is actually parking at the venue. There is limited parking underground at the venue. Uh, I believe there's about 20 parks at the venue, so you can uh, actually park at the venue. Um, oh, well, Brett, Brett Rod, um, uh, questions from Brett. Um, we'll, we'll get to, uh, I'll answer your question right now, Brett. Um, uh, no, you won't need deck lists for the Battle Hard, and it's not a professional level event. Um, hey, bring a deck list if you want to, but. Um, uh, that'd be cool, but no, you won't need deck lists for the Battle Heart. Uh, but, you, but, but you will need them for the Sunday event, for the PT, uh, the yes. PTI. Yeah. So the PTI qualifiers. So if, you're, if, you're playing, so. if you're planning to run the same list, you know, you can always just drink up to not even. So. Well, um, here's here's a good thing. Um, yeah, this is what I'd strongly suggest, actually, is um, we will have deck list sheets available. Um, but yeah, as Ian said, if you print out a couple of copies of your lists, um, uh, it's always a good idea. I remember one I ran a uh, site public events for a, for a large non-fab event many years ago, and actually just charged people for you know, printing out extra copies because of course uh, they were going to last chance qualifiers, and of course you have to have the deck list and you can't get it back. So I just charged like an extra fee for for unlimited printing of their deck lists for the day. I think it was like five bucks at the time. But um yeah, so yeah, ma make sure you've got second you've got second lists. Um, but, uh, oh, sorry. Well, getting back to my point before I go off track is just um, if you have questions about nationals, 
uh, reach out to me at op at fabtcg.com. Um, obviously, I am on Facebook. Um, that's uh, If you see me on Facebook, it's generally my personal Facebook. So um, you can send me a message, but um, I get a lot of messages on my personal Facebook. So uh, easier if you email me um, or otherwise chuck up a question on the Question Bud fan page. Um, you can tag me there. Other people may answer or find the information. But just um, if you're not sure about something, now is the time to reach out to us uh, as opposed to like, you know, I mean, there's only a few weeks um, yeah, there's only a few weeks before the event actually happens. So, um, yeah, now's the time to reach out. All righty, cool. Well, um, I think uh, other than that, I think uh, we're pretty much done. We're, uh, we're excited to get into it. Um, I, of course, will be at Nationals with the, uh, with the coffee van um, uh, doing coffees before round one each day. Um, obviously, I am playing in the event, so... Um, I'll probably play a deck that uh, that loses pretty quickly, so I might do, I might do coffees <laughs> in between rounds as well. But uh, but uh, definitely definitely have the, the team up and running uh, from doors open until uh, uh, just before the player uh, registration. Yeah. Um, yeah. In fact, people won't be able to get people won't be able to get past you. To uh, you will be right at the front door um, purveying coffee, so they, they 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 will need to get through you. Um, before I can get to the event, um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm really excited. Like you're driving down, I am flying down. I'm actually getting into Wellington on Wednesday night, um, so hopefully, like Thursday, I'll get a chance to uh, Thursday uh, chance to visit some stores and maybe hopefully hang out with a few people um, before the event. Um, but yeah, it's going to be an intense couple of days. Uh, you know, the battle happened on Friday night. It'll be like a nice little bit of an easy in. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward. Um, uh, me and uh, two thirds of the dev team are all um, are all bunking up together. In fact, I did actually try and get a room for us that had bunks, but um, but Chris was like, no, no. <laughs> no, I don't think so, Alan. You know, obviously, I was looking to get like the best value accommodation for for uh, LSS, you know, because I'm always minded on budget. And Chris is like, no, I don't think so, Alan. We're, we're not doing that. I'm having a real bed, so nice. uh, this gets so me, me, Chris, and Jason. Are we uh, be staying together, uh, not far from the not far from the venue? Oh, here's here's a useful little bit of information. Um, if you're historically or li um, literature minded, the the uh, Wellington Bridge Club is um, just after Catherine Mansfield House in Wellington. So if you if you know a little bit about Catherine Mansfield and literature, there is a a useful stop. But um, I love Wellington. Um, I'm looking forward to. Uh, spending uh, you know at least at least one day. Um, the only thing I find sometimes is when I'm down in Wellington, like it's for events, you never get to you never get to see things. You never get to you know it's always a bit of a rush. But um, I don't know. I'm really looking forward, like because uh, you know obviously I've been down to events in Dunedin. Um, you know you you came down. We both were down in Wellington for the road to Nats, um, and this time um, you know there's so many people that are qualified from around the country. Um, and they're all going to be there. So um, uh, I suppose the thing I would like to say is, um, no matter what, you know, even if you see me a little bit stressed or um, uh, or maybe crying or something like that, I'm um, just, you know, um, I don't know. Come and talk to me. Um, if you've got some crazy wacky ideas for OP, um, you know, I will I will politely politely listen to everybody wow. and make notes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll smile. No, I'll smile. No, but um, yeah, just come talk to us. Um, I mean, this is your golden opportunity. If you haven't met um, like James before, and I mean James is our our fearless fearless leader and visionary. Um, I mean he is part of the part of the team, but you know he he is a man. This is a chance to talk to him. I mean Chris and Jason, um, you know don't don't get out to a, a lot of events, so you know you'll be talking to the guys that are actually working on, on they've worked on the sets, and you know they can talk about the the sets that have happened. You know can't talk about anything new. Um, but yeah, this this is your golden opportunity to talk to a lot of team. Uh, unfortunately, some of the you know the creative team is not going to get down there. Um, it's just going to be mainly yeah, the me and the okay. dev team. But, um, you know, we we we'll, we'll organise transit. Has, yeah, COVID has uh, has uh, put pay to uh, the, some of the big plans we've had. But uh, I think it's going to be a good weekend. Um, yeah, and we we are looking looking forward to it. Um, but yeah, as I said, I think that that's about wraps up wraps it up for us mm. today um again 
as Alan said, if you have any questions, reach out to him at op at sabtpg.com. Um, well, one last Chris, thing from Chris. Chris, Chris. Say we, we, yes. we want Sasha. Well, unfortunately, uh, the Australian uh, the Australian border is not going to allow that at the moment. <laughs> Moment. Yeah. To, to be fair, to be fair, we we want Sasha as well. Um, and I, I I'd never met Sasha before. Um, obviously, Jason you know, introduced us at um, uh, at the various calling events. Um, but you know, uh, love that man now. Um, he's a great guy. So we we definitely want Sasha Sasha here too. But yeah, it doesn't doesn't look like it'll happen um, unless there's uh, some kind of miracle. But um, yep, send send your love to Sasha, Chris. Send your love to Sasha. Um, and hopefully he'll be here one day. All right. Okay, folks. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, again, get your testing in. Stay safe. Wash your damn hands, and we'll see you at Impact. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, on the podcast, we will see you uh, for season three very soon. All right. That's a, that's a lot of information, but that was good.